Hey everybody, what's happening? Hey, welcome back. So in this section, we're gonna be looking to master the GA4 BigQuery data architecture and also build pretty good mental models about writing queries. And unlike regular relational databases, the GA4 BigQuery export schema is very event-driven, event-like. Everything is just in one big table and you have to figure out how to build your own sort of representations of tables based on the kind of event that it is, uh, different keys that you can use to join across events. And let's just talk about that for a second. We're gonna write some code in this video, then we're gonna write a lot more code shortly thereafter, but we at least need to sort of look at the, um, the event types, and the data model. So the way I think about the GA4 BigQuery export it's kind of like it's one big table. Of course, we have this uh, this table suffix thing. It's partitioned by date. We'll see that in a second if you don't know what I'm talking about. But every row is an event, okay? Just remember, really simple. Every row is an event. Each row has an event name. And events are kind of like tables. I'll just repeat that one more time. Every row is an event. Each event has an event name. An event name is like a table name. Okay, what do you really mean by that? So if we look at this this image here, this kind of textual representation that I had ChatGPT make me, by the way, I hope you're using ChatGPT to learn and debug your code. It lets you move a lot faster. So what do we have? We have an event. It's called a page view. This is like a single row, right? Let me, let me just draw it. So, you know, I have an event called a page view. It's a single row. Um, some, some fields are not nested, like the event date, the event timestamp, the, uh, the, the pseudo user ID, or maybe you filled out your own user ID. These are kind of like first level. And then you have all the, the nested stuff that describe that event. And this is how they get away with modeling everything in a single table, because of the detail that characterizes the events and enriches the data is, is all on these event parameters. And you'll get used to this. You use the, the, the operation unnest quite a bit. Sometimes you use it in a subquery. Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at a lot of different ways to do that. But, you know, what, what would some of the keys and values be for a, a page view? Maybe a page location and the value. Maybe a page title and the value. And notice that th there is another thing here that I'm kind of hiding. It's kind of like what data type is it? Like a page location... You know, that's a string, uh, a page title, that's a string, GA session ID. Um, I, I forget what that is. It might be a string or an integer, but, um, you know, in a purchase, right? So what happens in a purchase? Again, you have the common fields. You have an event date. You have a timestamp. You have a who did it. Then you go to the event parameters, right? And what do you have in here? Well, you have you have price. That's not a string. That That's probably like a, a float or something like that. So, um Let's actually take a look at that real quick. So, whoops, didn't, didn't mean to zoom in there. How do I zoom out? Okay, let me get rid of that. Unclick, sorry about that. Just learning this new screen editing software. So if we, well, actually this is a good time. So how do we find this data? We're gonna be using uh, a GA4 obfuscated sample e-commerce data set. This looks exactly like whatever GA4 data set you might have access to at work. It's a great place to practice. Um, how do you find it? Well, it, it's in the data set called BigQuery Public Data. If you've been rocking with me earlier in the class or uh, elsewhere, you might be in the, the JR James 83 1171 sample data data set, but now we're in this BigQuery Public Data set. And, and if you go down to the G, you've got at the end uh, the GA4 obfuscated sample data set. And if we look at that and we check out the schema, you'll notice the sort of flat fields like we were talking about, the date, the timestamp. And of course, up here, like they have this nice UI so you could like browse the partitions like oh, I just wanted to see the data from my birthday, 1226. Obviously, I wasn't born in 2020, but I was born on 1226. This is that this is kind of like a, a table for just for that specific day, 1226. And and we'll learn how to query these partitions. Why is it set up like that? Well, it's it's an efficient way to store data. You can query over specific dates. It's cheaper to query. So, you know, event params though, for instance, this is going to be really important because let's say we have a page view event. We know when it happened. 
but you know, we might also know the user who did it, right? The user ID, the pseudo user ID, but what about the session ID? Where the heck is, where the heck is the session ID? There's so many fields, but what if I want to join across session IDs for the same user or do something sophisticated? Well, that, that is in here. So already we're dealing with the event params just to get the session ID and notice how this is all just one row, right? This is row one. Okay. It's nested. So these are kind of flat fields. I'm calling these nested fields. And if, if we think about the session ID, what is it? It's, we have the key for session ID. So that's like the, the lookup. What, what, what do you want? This is kind of like a mini table within a row with all these keys. And then, well, it has values, right? And it, and it, and the values are a little clunky, right? They're separated based on, are they a string? Are they an integer? Are they a float? Are they a double depending on the data type? So when, when you start unnesting these fields, always keep in mind, like, Oh, am I, am I trying to get a string or a float or, or whatever? And I don't, you know, I, I've memorized a lot of SQL before. And I, I don't think all this stuff is worth memorizing necessarily. I think it's just worth like keeping in mind, like, am I looking for something that's nested or not? And, and once you have that down, you could just go in there and figure it out. So that is the data set that we're using in this case, session ID, it's an integer, um, the source Google, that's a string, right? Page location. That's a string. So these are all sort of like standard events that come along with the page view. Let's go back to the, uh, the slideshow though. And the thing I want you to keep in mind again, sorry if I'm being repetitive is that when you, you have these different event types, but you need to usually join across event types. For instance, what if you wanted to, um, join page view data for users who purchased? Well, per the purchase event is not in the page view event. There are different events. So what common keys do they have? Well, you have a user ID. You may also have a session ID. So that's how you sort of need to think about things. And another kind of, uh, necessary sort of evil about dealing with this data is that you have this thing called a, a table suffix, which represents the, the partition date of the data. And that's just something that gets emitted when you query the, uh, the data like this, when you use the events.star. Um, you know, you could, you could do something like this and, you know, I'm making a mess of it, but, and, and it would just query a specific day and we will do that in, in some of these sections just to save data because we're not worried about joining across dates, but you can also use a wild card and specify which suffixes or partitions you want. And then sometimes you have to do things where you you know, you parse that, that table suffix into a date, or you want to format it differently. And I try not to like get too worked up about memorizing all these specific functions. I just focus on the business logic, which is like, what events do I need? How am I going to join across the events? Is my logic right? And then I, I kind of fuss around with that later on. It's not that important. So what are we going to cover? We're going to build some attribution models. We're going to look at other common marketing scenarios like cohort analysis, page pathing. We're going to build some interesting user journey text-based diagrams. So you can quickly see what a typical user does across a session or perhaps across multiple sessions. We're going to practice dealing with nested parameters, finding event values, joining across event types, just building a strong mental model. Now the tools we're going to need, this is, uh, this is where things get a little hectic. So if you're brand new to querying this data set, this is going to feel really intimidating. So we're going to need common table expressions, window functions, uh, the unnest operator, subqueries, and probably a little bit of luck. If, if, if you've, uh, done a lot of window functions and, and big queries before, I think this will be okay. You just need to kind of get the mental model of, of kind of events and, and, uh, keys common to the events in your mind. But if you're approaching this all from scratch, it's going to be tricky. I'm going to do the best I can. But I won't lie, the complexity is pretty high and you're going to be taking in a lot at once between a sophisticated data model and lots of fairly advanced SQL concepts. So if that is you, definitely take it bit by bit, use chat GPT, really think about things, come back, give yourself some time to process 
and just try to focus on like getting code to work, writing it out. Don't worry about understanding it all at once. Just give yourself some grace and move forward steadily and it'll all work out. So just back into the interface here, let's just take a quick look at some things. So this is a, a query where you could, you know, if you ever wanted to see what the different table suffix, suffixes were, suffixes were in your data set, you, you could do something like that. But, you know, bringing us to our first uh, query here, let's, um, let's just run it. I'm hitting command enter. I'm on a Mac. I'm in Safari right now. They have all my passwords, so it's easy. And, you know, we can see for each uh, formatted date how many unique users were there. And user pseudo ID, it's kind of like uh, a unique user ID that persists across sessions. And I also think there's a user ID field that you control with your own business logic if, if you have it implemented. I'm just going to use the pseudo user ID because I think it does a good job of of handling logged in, logged out. Of course, it can't handle across device authentication because it's specific to the device and the browser and the client. So now one last thing, we could add one simple thing, you know, let's just add the event name and see what kind of event names are, are common in our data set. And notice how we have two ungrouped fields before the aggregation, so we need to group by them. And let's, uh, let's check it out. Let's run it. Let's look at some of the common events. And we have a lot of page views, first visit, session start. You know, these are, these are standard events. Some of these, I think, are custom events. Not everybody is going to have search results. Not everybody is going to have all these different e-commerce events. So your implementation may vary. I'm going to try to rely on standard events to explain things but you might have some custom logic in, in your own business implementation that you need to consider. And one thing we'll probably do here is we won't always query across ranges. We may just query on specific, um, you know, specific dates and we can sort of eliminate this logic and then, well, what's wrong here now? unrecognized table suffix. I'm not using a table suffix. We'll have to use the, um, the event date. That's a first level field. And we'll try to run that. And what am I doing? I'm ordering by a field that doesn't exist anymore. So I'll just order by one because that's always there as event date. So the errors begin, but we solve them. So here you go. We have the event date. We're querying a specific partition of the data and we are going to get going in the next video, learning how to build little expressions, learning how to unnest items and, and join across our different events to solve problems. So look forward to seeing you there. Let's rock it.